Hello and welcome to this cryptocurrency technical analysis where I have such a good one for you today. Of course, we're going to be going through what you're here for and that is the next levels to be aware of inside of this Bitcoin chart. The most well-respected levels that you just have to be aware of if you want to be successfully trading Bitcoin. In this video, of course, I not only want to give you that, but I also want to share right now the love and the passion that I am feeling for this cryptocurrency market. The volatility is back. We've got what we wanted and that is a really nice trend to be trading here at the start of 2023. Honestly, my motivation and love and passion right now is through the roof. I am just feeling so good about life in general, but also, of course, about the chart. This is what I absolutely love. And today, that's what we're going to be going through. Uh, so yeah, I hope that you're sat there with a big smile on your face, beaming and excited to learn and get ready for what's to come on the rest of this week. Obviously, a very big day tomorrow with the CPI data coming out. So this is going to be affecting the stock market and of course, the cryptocurrency market alike. So we're going to be preparing ourselves for that and we're going straight into the analysis together. Ladies and gentlemen, let's just have an absolute blast in this video. Let's enjoy it and let's get ready to crush the charts. So as I've always said, ladies and gentlemen, no technical analysis. We have no idea what's going to be happening next. We have no idea of recognizing probabilities. So what do we need to do? We need to put in the hard work and we need to do some original analysis. OK, this is my analysis that I've done during the last week. And so I'm going to save some time in adding that onto our chart for you right here. Now, again, if you want to see how I ever mark out these levels and get them in the first place, you obviously can get that over from the Champions live streams, right? And so now we've got our levels marked out, we have to then start to recognize things, what is called context, okay? Context is a very big, important factor as well as the correlations. So context, what does this mean? It means coming in here, recognizing levels that we're at, understanding uh, how we've reached that level. Of course, that means looking back through prior price action. So you have to recognize the level that you're at. How did we reach that level? And then come to a, uh, a conclusion of, is this a strong level? Is this a major level of resistance? Is this a major level of liquidity? Or is this just a sub internal level where we could look for our scope trades, e.g. a quick term time frame trade, obviously locally, the trend is up. So if we reach a minor level of resistance, we could look for a short trade off of that, but recognize, hey, this short trade is probably just going to be a scalp or day trade, and eventually it will hit that take profit one, stop us out, and we'll continue the trade up. So when we're recognizing these smaller sub levels where we can take these scalp shorts from versus a big important major liquidity level where we could look for a swing short, OK, and in the meantime, trade this trend up, hold on to our longs, and, you know, look for those more smaller term time frame short trade. So we need to understand the context, absolutely majorly important, as well as the correlations right now. As I've been saying, if you only trade cryptocurrency, that's fine, but you need to be aware of what's happening over in Forex and primarily in the stock market. Why? Because Bitcoin is absolutely pegged once again. If the stock market moves, Bitcoin's following. So you've got to be aware of those markets, even if you don't trade them. OK, so in today's video, I'm going to be going through those correlations. I'm going to be going over what I'm looking at next and explaining why I am still in a long trade here on Bitcoin, okay? So that's gonna be of interest to you as well. So make sure you pay full attention. I will be sharing some real great insights with you today. Um, I wanna start off, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, I actually had a uh, live market open into the stock market. So stock market opens 2.30 p.m. UK time. L yesterday I went live just before the open because obviously Yes, the stock market had just rejected off a major point of control, and I recognize this is a really big, important day. Thus, I wanted to go live for that open and talk people through uh, the price action as it was coming in uh, just before the open and during the hour of the open, right? And I just want to play you a quick one minute clip that I just really need you to listen to exactly how I'm analyzing live in the time, okay? Please listen to this, and then I'll be back in one minute after this clip is played. Thank you can see here locally so you do have very slight bearish divergences here on like the five minute chart uh, but for me this would be I would look at this context and say this is leading thus a newer trader might think right now okay bearish divergences let's take a short position whereas I am now reading the context of the DXY reading the context of the ES and I would say actually I expect this high to be taken so just just emphasizing this one more time we have bearish divergences here but because of reading the context of the DXY and the context of the ES, I would not short here based off of those bearish divergences. And I would actually view those as, as um, I would personally view that as leading, right? Uh, 
So uh, that was a quick clip that I wanted you to just play you first of all, uh, to help you get into my mind frame of how I'm recognizing live in the time, leading divergences versus actual bearish divergences, as I kind of showed you and talked you through there briefly. Um, well, I <laughs> just played you the clip. Here you had bearish divergences forming on Bitcoin. Most newer traders would simply view those bearish divergences and maybe take that short position. Okay, myself recognizing the market context, recognizing the correlations have come to the conclusion, no, this is not bearish divergence. This is actually leading. They will be invalidated and we will continue to move up here. During that stream, we also obviously continued to analyze during the hour of that open, uh, the ES, DXY and Bitcoin, of course. And I was very, you know, very concrete on my conclusions from the, even before it opened, I had the bias within five minutes of analysis before the open, uh, DXY to move down, I was saying ES is going to move up. I'm looking for higher on the ES. This is going to bring higher on Bitcoin. So before the open, before these moves, I knew my biases. I knew what I was looking for next. And it was higher here on Bitcoin. Okay, and obviously higher, as you can see here, this is, by the way, the ES on the left, and this is Bitcoin in the middle. But I was higher and bullish on both of them looking for higher prices based off of, once again, the context and the the um, uh, the correlations that we had in play there. Okay, so now I've just played you through that, what I was you know talking about yesterday. I'm going to give you a bit more insights because obviously we had, um, then of course I'm going to be moving on to what I'm looking at next, which as I've mentioned is higher, but um, I just want to make sure you're fully educated about this last move to the upside because it, it truly is important. It really is important that you fully grasp this because if you don't, you're going to be losing money. You just truly are going to be losing a lot of money. So make sure you just are understanding what I'm saying here on this next segment. Okay. So um, for me, we obviously had that uh, live stream going into the open yesterday where I was selling after even after that stream ended selling my team you know I still want to see this next push to the upside on Bitcoin as you can see here great fun listening to your perspective mate uh, DXY at the time was pushing for the new lows showed us the best probability for higher on the ES and higher on Bitcoin you can see here from Scott absolutely legendary trader himself by the way making over $500 profit absolutely wonderful to see that um, but yeah for me I just want to show you the a few posts here um, so this was uh, from a few days ago now, over two days ago. Still talking about wanting to see 17,400. Obviously, at the time we had rejected 17,375, but I still wanted to see 17,400. And let me say that this was obviously yesterday now. Uh, let me say this, team, if we reclaim the value area high, which we did in the end, I'm going to be looking for at least uh, 17,400. Of course, we are now above that. And as always, I'm telling my team, you know, if you have any questions about my charts, please let me know and I'll be happy to explain more and help you. I always just want to make this clear. Never want it to be a confusion. I never want it to be, is it this, is it that? No. If I have any, if you have any confusion about my charts, you just got to ask the question. I'm answering every single question. Every single question that comes in about my charts, I will give you the answer. Okay. So I go on. Obviously, this is after that live stream. I'd given my biases. I'm looking for higher on ES. I'm looking for higher on Bitcoin. Okay. We were looking for these higher prices to come. Go on to tell my team, Okay, now we're looking to flip that value area high into support, which happened in the end. And basically, I'm saying everything is good so far. I want to see this next push up on Bitcoin. We got that next push up on Bitcoin above 17,400. And uh, well, Bitcoin once again followed what I wanted, right? And so this was a this was a good start to the day. But the thing what I'm trying to educate you here is very important indeed. The things that I want you to pay attention to. First of all, understanding leading versus divergence. Okay. So here, for example, we had bearish divergences forming by reading the context that this was not a major level at anymore. We had at this point trading above value area high. Primarily the main reason here is the, um, uh, the, the correlation with other markets, recognizing that great strength to be seen on the ES. Okay. Recognizing we had just broken out of a mini range. Okay. We are holding, we've got, we've got the VWAP support. We've got the, um, we, we had at the time a strong SR flip, understanding why would ES turn around at this minor level? Okay. So at the time we're turning around at a minor level, it just makes a lot more sense to continue upwards here. So recognizing the context of the ES and the correlation that this has with Bitcoin, I had to believe Bitcoin was going to go up and break 17,400. Okay. And that's how, what you call, I suppose, having great confidence in the analysis, right? As you can see here, uh, you know, we broke up, we broke above that. Still telling myself, I'm not shorting Bitcoin yet. You know, I'm not shorting it yet. Two minutes later, we, we break up again and make another high. Still no shorts on Bitcoin, just long at the moment. And then, then this was brilliant, obviously, the level that we were looking at from that live stream up into the CC. That was also then hit, uh, you know, going into the night on the ES as well. So 
you know, it just goes to show that you have to absolutely uh, be, you know, very focused. And I think the main thing here is having that confidence to stick to your trades. So again, we're going to move on to exactly what's happening next here, by the way, and I'll give you the next levels. But I think I can give you a really nice bit of, uh, a, you know, a bit of help here in terms of your trading. You know, how do you become a really successful, profitable trader? It's uh, these three things. Now, please write this down. It's so important. You need to, of course, first have all the theory on education on lockdown. You need to fully understand the levels that you're marking out. You, you need to have that, you know, good understanding of technical analysis. OK, so as you have, of course, have number one, good understanding of technical analysis, then it's, of course, doing the technical analysis and marking out the levels. That's of utmost must importance. Point number two then comes a comes down to, in my opinion, having great confidence. OK, great confidence in your trades, understanding the levels and then Basically, I would put this also as understanding context. OK, so <laughs> you could say this is the, the 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 C's of the market. You need to understand the correlations. You need to understand the confidence in yourself and you need to understand. Sorry, the um, <laughs> I'm forgetting my own words here. The confidence, the correlations and the context. Yes, the context. Majorly important. You can have levels marked on your chart. I can have uh, the, the, the naked point of controls. I can have daily point. I can have the daily levels. I can have my CC's. At the end of the day, they're all levels right what separates me and you know for example i've taught oh god the ten thousand people let's say on the internet of, of how to trade you know these people can then go off and do their own things absolutely brilliant but what separates somebody that maybe has exactly the same chart as me you know they've learned from me they have the exact same analysis as me what separates myself from somebody else that has just learned from me. Okay, we have the exact same levels. It's that understanding of what actually then is an important level, what is a weak level, and understanding the context of how we're approaching these levels like greatly. Then having the intuition and experience to judge, for example, when CVD is leading, when CVD will play out. And how do you get that? Well, in my opinion, the only way you can achieve that is via, okay, experience and time, actually screen time. Of course, I've been doing this now over 12 years. Thus, naturally, I have a very good intuition and feel of the market. Like I said yesterday to my team, it wasn't a joke, but during that live stream, I said to them, you know, when I say something in the group that I want to see, 90% of the time it's played out and it happened again yesterday, you know. But, you know, it's kind of it's it's, it's kind of like saying it in a lighthearted way, but it is it's true. Right. When I say I would like to see this, if you're inside the group as a champion, just do your own research. Every time I say I would like this to happen, record how many times it happens and how many times it doesn't. You see, over 90 percent of the time it is happening. And that's just because I truly just have this good feel for the market. Right. OK, not every time I'm going to win, but the majority of the time, you know, we're walking away with victories. And so that's that's the, the second thing that's really you know going to be looking at there. And what separates even people with the exact same analysis, you know, what's separating one guy from winning the trade, one guy from losing, one guy from understanding what's happening next. And the other guy from saying, oh, this was a level. Why didn't it get respected? Okay, it all comes down to the context there. And so I think. And then the, the, the third point that I would just say there is the execution. And it's the, you know, about executing the trade, understanding, hey, at the end of the day, this is a game of probabilities. There's no way we can win every single trade. So just then having the execution of saying, hey, this is my trade entry. I've seen the setup. I'm going to take it. I'm going to win. I'm going to lose. Whatever happens, I'll move on to the next trade. We're again, after a string of winners, we're, lo we're looking for, you know, the high win rate over time. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to risk management. And a little bit of a bonus fact, I suppose, over the past three years, my worst, you know, worst performing month has still been net profitable of at least three million. So or even on my worst month, you know, over the past three years, I've still netted at least three mil. So for me, like... Of course, this maybe is, is an unrealistic expectation for many people. But for me, it's like, you know, even on bad before, you know, bad before months, I'm still netting profits and, and, and good profits at that. Right. And that is not like by luck. You know, people will say, oh, this is lucky, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you create your own luck. You get what you put in. You know, I'm out here every single day, all day, you know, putting in a lot of time, a lot of effort. And, you know, I'm, I'm netting the results that one would say maybe I deserve. Right. So, yeah, luck is you create your own luck every, every everybody. 
So with that said, <laughs> you know, um, you know, obviously we've seen this local uptrend on Bitcoin. You know, this lo local uptrend is all stemming from that value area low. Okay, obviously we come back into that value area low at the start or start of 2023, end of 2022, right? Officially the December. From that value area low, we have just continuously been making higher highs and higher lows. If you've followed my analysis, you do know that I longed this value area low. Originally took my take profit one, and then I said very clearly, I'm just going to trail my stop loss. And I, by doing that, you can see how this market structure has been so kind, that long position from the value area low, I'm still in, and I'm still trading my stop loss up. Because the market structure has not changed, I've had no, you know, but the stop loss has never obviously been hit because I'm trading up with these higher lows. So in that regards, this, this uptrend is exactly what we need to be aware of right now. The uptrend is strong. Yes, we have levels to short. And this also, I think, can cause a little bit of confusion, maybe. You know, I see people say, Daniel, two days ago, you said you were in a short position on Bitcoin. Absolutely, I was two days ago in a short position on Bitcoin. What you have to recognize is it was a scalp trade, okay? I was in a short position, price had already, you know, decreased in price. Again, if you trade off my titles or the thumbnails, you're gonna get wrecked, I'm just gonna say that. You're probably gonna lose money because the thumbnail and the title is totally different than what I'm actually saying in the video. If you listen to my videos and actually listen to what I'm saying, you will hear me say many times, you know, I've said many times like, I'm in no local short positions, only in a long right now. Okay, so if you really listen to the context and what I'm saying, you're going to get a lot more information. You're going to benefit a lot more. Like, I mean, I could make an example of this right now. I could, for example, change all my thumbnails and all my titles, right? But I cannot change the content of what was said. I cannot edit that. I've never have and never would delete a video of mine. And so, you know, it's very important that you actually listen. And if you go back over since the start of the year and really listen to what I've said in those videos, you would have seen I've had this bullish bias locally. Locally, I've had this bullish bias. And it's, of course, played out very well so far, right? Well, with that said, um, we're going to start to move on, as, I, as, I, as I'm talking about here, to what we're looking at next. So I can be aware of the ES, which is pushing up very nicely now. The DXY is slightly pulling back a little bit. DXY still has this like really key level ES. Uh, slightly pulling up, pulling up. So what I'll be looking at here on the more local term time frame is, is first of all, we have an initial range to be trading. So we have this like local lower term time frame range. Okay, so this is something down on like the 5 to 15 minute chart that we can be looking at. But really simply, we're currently just going sideways. This is trying to flip that around 17,350 into support, currently resistance around 17,500. So it was that, obviously I had marked out 17,400 as a resistance and we're, we're still within that resistance zone, okay? Um, so within this zone, we're now forming a little, well, we're silly, really simply trading a range. Within here, if you are a, you know, a lower term time frame trader, of course, you can be getting into these lower term time frame positions. You can be looking to, you know, short the top of the range, long the low of the range. Of course, if you are doing that, you, you cannot do that blind. You have to be paying attention to the lower term time frame order flow because without that right now, I, I wouldn't even be thinking to try and sculpt this. Okay? You, you definitely have to be looking at the order flow right now. But if you are on top of that and you do understand how to sculpt trade, then this is an absolutely perfectly acceptable lower term time frame range. Of course, at some point, we're going to break out of that, either to the downside, where we can look for our next level to the downside, or simply we will break up, we'll look for our next level to the upside, right? Level to level trading. This is what I do and teach at Chart Champions consistently, because it is simply the best and most profitable way to trade. Okay, so now I'll go over the levels that I am looking for next, when this range undoubtedly does break to the upside, uh, sorry, just like break out, okay, to the upside or to the downside. <laughs> that wasn't trying to be some sort of hint, by the way. Um, so... This range, little uh, time time frame range, is going to be breaking out soon, okay? And so I'm going to cover the next levels that we're looking at here. Before I do that, I just want to do one quick uh, talk through of, uh, you know, kind of a little bit of a thank you, I suppose. And it was to all of the, this was yesterday's videos. Just look at the, yesterday's video. The, the comments that I had, the support that you're giving me is just absolutely wonderful. You know, people can see that I'm back with a bit of, uh, you know, back with a bang, you could say, you know, absolutely, truly, I am motivated in my personal life and obviously here in the professional environment, what I do. And uh, it's great to see that you can really, truly see this. Uh, you know, we have a lot of people, um, you know, it's like I say here, I can truly say that for myself and Chart Champions, 2022 was not a great year in terms of Chart Champion structure and community feel. But we listened to feedback and your wants, took it on board and totally changed the dynamic. 2023, you can now just see we are focused on improvement. 
Okay. And I suppose if you're interested in, you know, we can obviously keep monitoring Bitcoin at the same time. But if you're interested in this type of like business mindset or community feel, I think it's truly a, a fact here that every community or business, so to speak, will go through tough times. We had many problems to sort out and changes to implement to fix them. Now we have done that. Chart Champions community feels stronger than ever. And truly my motivation is the highest it's ever been. Let's go team. Okay. It's like when I read through some of them, like the comments here, you know, people are saying that they joined in 2022, late 2021, they left because it was really toxic in terms of the discord was very toxic. Like seeing here, you know, in the past, I would recommend chart champions, but I would also mention that the discord was, you know, toxic, didn't feel comfortable asking questions in there. There were a lot of people snapping up you straight away. And, you know, here, the, you know, this is the, the 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 shine in the light. I was really surprised when I logged into general chat in the fall and saw how much it had changed. I now recommend chart champions without any reservations. You know, we've obviously listened to your feedback, right? We had very good constructive criticism, and as a you know, as a as as somebody that is very much wanting to improve, I got to listen to that constructive criticism and actually make changes. Because it's one thing getting feedback and not listening to it. It's another, you know, altogether listening to feedback and, and making the changes that are required. So it's like I said here, we could only improve after accepting our mistakes and wanting to approve on them. We took all the feedback and changed. Why? Because we had to go back. What are we wanting here? And we truly want to improve our service and go back to our original roots of wanting to help people improve their lives and become profitable traders, period. Right. So, of course, had the higher level, you know, problems management. We had coaches literally calling people snowflakes and just causing arguments with members. It's obviously we had to sort out. It's like major problems we had. You know, from coaches like doing this sort of stuff to we had, you know, major toxicity in, in terms of, of the discord and some trolling and just awful things like that. We then had like from myself, like we had no structure in the discord, right? We had no champions, um, read only coaches only channel. That's obviously major change. Then we, of course, listened to people wanting like the, the speed runs. They did wanted it. So, you know. You don't have to listen to a one hour long video. You can get the speed run quick down, shortened version of that. Of course, now the courses, we have expanded upon that. We've gone into new master series courses. So we've like really redone our content. We've really listened to the feedback. We've really took that on and we've implemented every change. Okay. And you can see here, like left CC Paul a year ago and just rejoined. The structure changes in Daniel team have adjusted precisely fulfilled the reason why I left. Okay. Um, so it's really good to see that here, for example, the last comment that I read chart champions is the best in the pro trading space, watching Daniel in live action this morning, creating a bias in five minutes of the direction of the markets was amazing. He is so confident, no BS. And we are so blessed to get his insights. CC has changed my life completely. And that is why I'm here. That's why I'm so happy. And that's why I'm absolutely going to continue to give you the best analysis that you're going to find on the internet, period. That's what I want. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, so with that said, let's move on to what I'm looking at next on the higher term time frame. So we are currently once again within this range. If we break above this range, there's one thing that I'd like to just uh, first of all say for the lower term time frame traders. So if we mark out that local range that we have once more. One thing that I'd always be aware of is we can, of course, look for an initial lower term time frame, like swing fire pattern or failed auction of this lower term time frame range, right? This doesn't expect major follow through, but for the lows, we could look for a swing fire pattern. For a high, we could look for a swing fire pattern. So this is under the conclusion that this range full on breaks, right? It doesn't end in a swing fire pattern. But when this range does break, because it will, uh, our next region above us is going to be this CC. And that's really simply from the high of the 14th of June down to the low there on the, uh, well, I've took this from the 19th of June low. Okay, you can see 19th of June, the 19th of December low. So from that, we have got, of course got this CC. So starting this zone of around 17,518 from this high of the four hour, that's our CC zone up to around 17,656. For me, not really a major level of resistance, if I'm totally honest with you, because you have to think to yourself the confluence. This is a level that I'd be aware of, yes, but uh, not for me any sort of major level. But more, more so above us, we then have the uh, TNPOC and then the daily level around 17,800. Of course, if we actually start to break these levels, such as 17,800, we can look for that to actually back, come back up above the high of that rally to around 18,800, if not, you know, like much higher, right? So again, I'm not saying we're going much higher. I'm not saying I'm extremely bullish. I'm saying level to level environment. Let's trade these levels next and let's see the reaction. Okay, we could, of course, reject where we are here. If this, if this range locally breaks down, then 
well, then we can forget about these levels above us, right? Level to level environment. But for now, we're in a big uptrend. I am in long positions and, you know, happy to to keep my targets set for higher, right? But that said, if we do start to break down from this local range, I got to adjust my bias and I'm happy to, you know, do that, right? And for me, there is no real local levels on the way down. There's, no, there's not a lot of local support here. Okay, I'm going to be looking at the uptrend that we have going on here with our uh, volume view up coming in at around 17,000, let's say 17,250. Okay, so for me, yeah, 17,250, then we have a lower POC there around 17, let's say 17,200, okay, just below. So we have a minor levels of support on the way down, but you know, our biggest levels of support are, are quite a bit below us, right? They, they, they would be looking for a bit of a drop, uh, you know, quite a large drop. So you've got to be aware of these factors. You definitely got to be aware of these factors. But what I'd be saying is, where's my executable trade right now? OK, and I just don't simply have that executable trade as it, as it stands in terms of a short position. OK, so I'd have to remain patient for one or two things where, where we are right now. I can say, let me just take a look at this before I make a decision. OK, so, yeah, I personally would not take a short position where we are here. I would wait for one or two things, preferably higher. Right. Or alternatively, actually seeing a bit of a breakdown occur. OK, starting to come back below 17,350. If we start to close below that, then I could look for the CCW setup and look to short a retest. OK, so for me, it would. Yeah, for a short position, I would I'd definitely remain patient right now. OK, because I just don't have that executable reason to to take a position. And I think this is a very big, important factor, right? Uh, remaining patient you do have to remain patient quite a bit at the time in trading um to to wait actually for an executable reason again if you struggle with patience if you struggle with confidence if you struggle with executing well that's why we've got well these live streams right that's also why i do the, the the trading channel because maybe you know for example you are you know continuously trying to short and short and short this uptrend well then if you see me coming into the group you know, explaining I'm not shorting here on live streams, explaining I'm looking for higher, explaining I'm in no local short positions. You know, if you, you if you struggle with the confidence, then naturally, if you see myself like coming in the group and just clearly no games, no hidden content, but clearly just saying I'm looking for higher. Simple as this. I'm looking for higher. It's probably going to aid you from continuously shorting and shorting and shorting and just getting stopped out and stopped out and stopped out. Right. So if you do lack that confidence and you want to turn your trading game around, then, well, I think I think really, truly think that, that this is the best place you're going to find. Um, so, yeah, that that's if that's of interest to you, then, you know, you lack that confidence or you just want to be in a supportive community, then you can obviously get that at chartchampions.com. Um, you know, this is where we got all our educational content. This is where we got our live streams live trading streams, educational content. I've got another live stream tonight for the contenders. If you want to train, trade Heinz baked beans from the stock market to the forex market to the cryptocurrency market, right? We're covering it all. And uh, yeah, I've got another live stream tonight uh, going over new setups. So this is the thing. We're going over new setups. We're doing new strategies. And this is all, um, you know, part of the, the new work workflow that we've got throughout 2023. So it's going to be brilliant. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've understood it. I truly, you know, that that's what my main want is of this video. I truly just want you to understand how I'm trading. OK, please don't be affected by a title or a thumbnail or something I write on Twitter. At the end of the day, you've got to understand when I'm in my professional mode, when, you know, when I'm talking in the discord, when I'm talking in my live streams, when I'm understanding and you know truly explaining, there is no confusion. There is no what about this? What about that? This is my plan. This is this is my bias. This is why I'm confident and this is what I'm looking for next. Right. So, yeah, make sure you truly understand that. And, um, yeah, with these free public videos, I'm just trying to give you the next levels and maybe give you a little a glimpse of, of what I'm, I'm looking at next. Right. So, yeah, I hope that you appreciate and understand that. Uh, that's my aim of this video. I hope to, you know, even if it's just to provide you a bit of inspiration of showing you what you can do, what's possible, the results that you can make. Um, yeah, that, that's my aim here. So once again, I think truly honestly hope that you've enjoyed this video hope you found it insightful and helpful and understood now the levels that i am looking for next thank you ever so much everybody i send my love i send my passion through this screen and i hope that is entering into your heart right now if you want to see more from me you know what to do chartchampions.com so yeah just end by saying that thank you for all the support <laughs> good to see you making over one thousand dollars of me during live streams and uh yeah it's honestly good for me to just say you know 2022 the bad times that chart champions went through are over and you know good bright times and 
you know, the best possible scenarios ahead. So thank you ever so much. And uh, yeah, good comes to those who wait, I suppose. Thank you ever so much. Let's continue to crush the charts this year and may 2023 be an absolutely wonderful year for you all. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. And goodbye. <laughs> uh, and along with, of course, this legal trade disclaimer, if you just want to read through that. Cheers, everybody. And once again, goodbye.